Hey, 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 everybody. Today for you, podcast number 66. Today's podcast is titled, Be Prepared to Give a Reason. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of your weekly Limitless Life Network podcast. I'm Dr. Pete Lombardi, and sitting next to me is my beautiful wife, Sandy. Always looking great. Thank people you. love People love you on the podcast. Mm. I still get lots of comments every week. So you can keep commenting. It's great. <laughs> I know. I have a great wife. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we want to thank you. We always like to start the podcast off with just showing our gratitude to all of our listeners uh, each and every week that, uh, you know, take a moment out of their day, uh, whether they see me in passing or, or whatnot, or shooting out a, a text message or an email. Um, yeah, really appreciate the positive comments. And uh we really enjoy putting these together, mm -hmm. I, I believe, and uh, looking forward to uh, creating many more uh, in the future. But if you like this content, be sure to like, follow, share, as well as uh, passing it on with others. Hit the subscribe button, all that stuff that you do when it comes to the world of podcasting. <laughs> All right, so today's podcast, as we say, on with the show, uh, unless there's something else that you want me to say. Mm -hmm. All right, um, this title actually is kind of stolen from a phrase that a friend of ours uh, mm -hmm. always seemed to say, and um, it's it's not the full it's not the full uh, comment that he would make. Um, but a friend of ours, name is his name's Roy, and uh, and I, I can't leave out Roy without mentioning his wife Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> but Roy and Nancy, they live down in Florida now. They are uh, a great retired uh, couple, and they used to they used to attend a youth group meeting with us. They <laughs> they called it the youth group meeting because everybody was younger than them. <laughs> and uh, but Roy uh, Roy always shared, and they both had a lot of wisdom. I mean, Roy gets a lot of. Uh, I think accolades for his knowledge of the Bible, mm -hmm. um, but Nancy always had some of the best real life experience that she would. She was like color commentary almost. Mm -hmm. they were a great team. <laughs> great team. Miss great them. team. Miss them both dearly. And uh, but anyway, shout out to Roy and Nancy. But Roy always said, "Be prepared to give a reason for the hope that you have in Jesus." Mm -hmm. And I thought. This you know this goes great with this week's message, so we're just use a, a part of it for the title, and um, yeah, so a lot of wisdom in that uh, that very thing because that's that's really uh, you know it's your ability to give your own testimony mm -hmm. as to why you have hope in life, and so yeah. um, okay. so what's that leads our, us to point number one. Yeah, I'm doing all this talking <laughs> here. Like let me let me get some talking in, right? <laughs> okay, point number one. What is point number one? Promises, 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 promises. So. All right, so um, our our pastor this week talked about this, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and one of the comments that uh, that I we both were kind of taking some notes, but one of the the things I wrote down is that promises um, promises from men are always subject to fall short, mm -hmm. but a promise from God will always be delivered, right? Yeah, true. yeah, always be delivered. It'll it'll always deliver. It's mm -hmm. always going to be true. Um, and and I know that that doesn't always happen. Promises are not always, you know, they don't always happen the way you think they're going to happen, especially when it's a promise that God makes. And it may not happen in the time frame that you have set aside in your own mind. It's really interesting. And, and I find this in real life, um, just in my own practice in chiropractic, is that Oftentimes, people have a <laughs> a timeline when they think it would be reasonable to get what they want, or mm, well, their health restored, right? <laughs> right, right, right. So, I mean, I mean, it, you know, something may have taken decades to develop, and you're thinking, well, you know, you know, thirty days is a pretty reasonable mm -hmm. uh, window of time to fix the, those decades of problems, and or maybe sixty days, or maybe ninety days, whatever that timeline might be. Um, you know, and the meter's running, so to speak, like, oh, I'm putting coins in, like, it, it should mm -hmm. be getting better, right? And uh, not necessarily, not necessarily it, when you think about what's really, truly involved in the bigger picture. So, yeah, promises, promises. So, you know, where, you know, 
in the end, you know, what are you? What promises do you put your put your faith in? Do you put your faith in the promises of man, or in the promises of God? And I, I got to say that, you know, I've let a lot of people down in life, and 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 and, and oh, we don't try too. to. We don't do it right. intentionally, but mm-hmm. sometimes we just can't deliver because we have limitations ourselves. We're just we're human beings, so. Mm-hmm. You know, God always delivers. I was just struggling with that, like feeling like I had let someone down over the weekend and it was something I imposed on myself. It wasn't f- from them. Um, but I, I think, Pete, you helped me f- realize this, like in order to not let them down, I had to do something that it was a time crunch and wasn't healthy for our family, you know? So like we're, we're limited. God is not, we have limited time resources, right? Like, Mm-hmm. So I had to make a wise choice to not feel like I wasn't letting them down. But you know what I mean? Right, right. It's yeah. complicated sometimes. Like, yeah, but... well, we make it complicated, mm-hmm. don't we? Yeah. Because <laughs> we put our emotions into it. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, which is fine. I mean, we're emotional creatures by, by nature. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So what's point number two? Point number two is pro- is from Proverbs thirteen twelve. 12. Um, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. So, yeah. We, we, hope deferred makes a, makes the heart sick. What do you mean by hope deferred? That's like that's like when we're gonna say I don't have a reason to be hopeful right now. I'm I'm you know I just can't see the hope in this situation. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna be miserable. I'm going to be depressed. I'm going to be, I don't know. We wrote down a bunch of things. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick with worry, doubt, shame, guilt, discouragement. Um, I'm going to be helpless. I'm going to just be so exhausted. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you're just like, I'm just so tired of this. Right. You know, you get exhausted. Um, And that's that hopeless feeling. And um, I think the point um, with this too is that every day we need to find hope for that day. Right? Mm-hmm. Like a reason, a spark. And we were talking about that too. Like, what's the spark? There's got to be some kind of ignition, ignition, mm-hmm. um, something that ignites that hope in you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that catalyst, mm-hmm. right? Something that really gets it going. Um, yeah, and then on the other hand, hope creates the opposite, which are possibilities, right? Mm-hmm. Possibilities get exciting. <laughs> you know, there's a possibility that, uh, you know, we could go on a vacation. There's a possibility that uh, we could uh, start a new venture. We could uh, you know, move the locations. Who knows? There's possibilities. Possibilities right. are options, right? It gives us options. And I, I remember, um, you know, that's one of the things that people are that are very successful are always looking for. They're looking for more options, because option with options becomes more freedom, mm-hmm. less limitations, right? Um, so it gives us options and it, it gives us alternatives to that fruitless state. And so in this in this verse, it talks about a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. And I think of a tree of life as is growth, mm-hmm. and I think mm-hmm. of fruitfulness. Yeah, right. I have this picture. In my head, a tree is also like to me longevity and mm-hmm. generational. And um, mm-hmm. an example I was thinking of with this this past well yesterday um, was little Lydia's birthday, and got me thinking about her mom Kelly. And um, Kelly had been hoping for revelation and change in her one of her son's life in her son's life, and um, he was in a dark place for many years and she just was relentless in seeking wisdom and and resources to help him. And she never got to see the fulfillment, but the promise has been kept. Like we're getting to see her son thrive in the environment he's in right now. And I, I just had this picture of him like as this tree, like, and she'd be so thrilled to know like the generations after him and, potentially his children that are going to be impacted by those seeds and those, the hope that she had for what his future could be, Mm. you know? So I think looking way beyond ourselves and 
that thinking of that tree of life. It goes way beyond us. Mm-hmm. And for those of you listening that don't know who Kelly is, but you may have kind of picked up that she's no longer with us. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she uh, died at a young age, and her her son, uh, you know, is is doing really really well now compared to where he was when she was living. And she just prayed and tried everything for the, for her son, and she wanted nothing more than him to have a fruitful life, and he's experiencing that now. Mm-hmm. Even though she's not seeing it on earth here, but in heaven she's experiencing that. So that's fantastic. So love that, love that. That's point number two. Okay, point number three. <laughs> Don't sleep on the cover, and you have to, have explain, to explain this one for us. <laughs> Don't sleep on the cover. It doesn't mean put your your head on the cover of a book or anything like that. But uh, the phrase "don't sleep on it" means like don't underestimate it, right? So don't sleep on the cover, the external coverings. When something on the exterior doesn't look that um, enticing, well, oftentimes you just don't know the full story, Mm -hmm. right? So you've heard the the old saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't sleep on the cover. And um, in in a book that I've been reading for the entire year... um, just a page a day, which is kind of a de- devotional. That's how you read it. <laughs> um, to this today's was about uh, the tent, and, um, and and this tent on the outside was made of badger skin, and it looked like no really any particular tent. It was quite dull looking on the outside, but as you went inside, it was uh, the first room that you went into was this holy room, and there was a. Um, uh, a table of gold with a gold menorah on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then if you went into the next room, it was the Holy of Holies, and it had the tabernacle, and inside um, the tabernacle was, you know... The, the Ark. And the, the Ark, yeah. Yeah, the ark and um, inside the Ark, there was uh, the presence of God. So the deeper you went into the this tent, the more beautiful it became. Mm-hmm. And a um, couple of things with this that really struck me, and that is, you know... On the outside, what people think they know about, you know, God, Jesus, walking with God, yeah, superficially, it sounds like, yeah, it sounds interesting, sounds okay, sounds boring maybe a little bit. But the deeper you go, the more you study, the more you read, the more you pray, the more you worship, the more you, the deeper you go, the more you pray, the more you study, the more you <laughs> read, the more you worship, your life starts to change mm-hmm. <laughs> and it just gets better and better and better, the deeper you go, the better it gets. And when you think about things in the world today and they look beautiful on the outside, the deeper you go, the more you find out about it, yeah, it's not so great. Mm, you know, true. it seems to be like almost a letdown. Like on the outside, we're advertised and marketed to all the time about the the latest and the greatest and how great this thing is. The deeper you go, the less impressive it becomes, the more you peel back the curtain, the worse it gets. It's very shallow. It's very shallow. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between anything that man can create Mm. and that which is of God. Right. That's a very good point. Thanks. (laughs) You know, I (laughs) peeked at his devotional today to prepare for that point because he shared it with me. And I have to toot your horn, I guess. I was thinking he's on... Day 340, I think I looked at. And I was like, this is a man who sticks to routine. And I was like, this is awesome. Like, I have things that I should be doing that every day, but I'm so, you know, behind on. And I'm like impressed that you've kept at it every day. So you've missed maybe 15 days in the entire year. Well, <laughs> I did start late too. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't start on time, but no, I definitely missed a couple of days. Yeah. But uh, and I don't tend to want to. I don't want to read two in one day because mm-hmm. I don't think they're meant to be no, digested that way. Well, it's in, it's yeah. more because because you read it, but then you think about it, and you may reread it again and go back. And mm-hmm. I like sharing them on the podcast because then it helps me reread it again. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's selfish. That's why I do it. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for the side note. <laughs> Point All number right. four. Point number four. <laughs> go ahead. Out of the overflow, we become the element of hope. Uh, yeah. Out of the overflow, mm-hmm. we become the element of hope that others don't have, but desperately what they desperately need. Mm-hmm. So, you know, God is always willing to pour into us, but we have to we have to submit and also, pour, you know, we have to seek. 
right? And, um, and to follow, <laughs> you know, that's mm-hmm. what he asks us to do. But with that, it, there's a filling up. It, it's just a, it's hard to really describe, but you become filled with hope. Mm-hmm. You become filled with faith. And out of that, you begin to overflow. Right. And that overflow does not look like your average ordinary person walking down the street. And that is something that becomes out of place almost. And that becomes encouraging to other people. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I, I just, in, you know, that's part of what I'm, I'm thinking of with this one is that out of the overflow, we become the element of hope. And And you mentioned that, you know, this reminds you of a bit of science because, go ahead. Yeah, well, we're doing chemistry right now in our homeschool. And I was saying, you know, we were studying elements and bonds and that you need us, um, well, energy is created and released. And I was thinking like we, we need some, we all need a spark, right? I touched on that earlier. Like, so can we be that element of hope, that spark in the circles around us, which Mm -hmm. we touch on almost every week, you know, like really making a difference in the circles that you're in. Yeah, it made me think that we need to add a uh, element to the periodic table yeah. and call it HP. <laughs> <laughs> Not after Hewlett Packard, but um, for hope. So yeah, that brings us to point number five. Okay. Um, the candle in the daylight, right? Yes, yeah, so the candle. candle, the candle in the daylight is not as useful as the candle at night. So this has this really spins off of the last uh, point um, out of the overflow because you become a beacon beacon to others. Um, but you know it depends on where you're where you are, right? And this is uh, if you have a candle in the daylight, it's not super impressive because it's light outside, right? So mm-hmm. there's this little tiny flame burning, Can't but you take see it's there. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can barely mm-hmm. see it's there. And if you take that same flame out into a pitch black area, you can actually see, Mm -hmm. right? It leads the way. And the bigger you make it, the more it becomes effective and useful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that that is telling me that for Christians to be just hanging with Christians and espousing their faith, okay, that's good, great, (laughs) you know, you're lifting each other up, but... You're not needed as much there as you are in a dark world Mm -hmm. that needs to hear the message. And, you know, we've kind of stepped up this podcast is to put it out to the world. So it's out there, you know, and and maybe it's not well received. Maybe it's received greatly, but the intention is always there, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, I don't want to change a thing. Because I want to, I mean, I don't want to change the thing as far as watering it down. Right. Right. I want to still burn bright in a dark world because I know that people desperately want it. They want to be hopeful. They want to be filled with faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it's not the darkness. It's such an anti-God, anti-faith world that we're in right now. Yeah. 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 And there's a lot of challenge with that. And I think people don't enjoy that challenge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, anything else you want to add to the podcast today? No, I think it was great. Okay, I do too. Well done. Maybe we'll get a call from Roy and Nancy. (laughs) I'd love to hear from you guys. I know you listen each week. Awesome. Well, that's all we have for this week's edition of your weekly Limitless Life Network podcast. Be sure to tune in each and every week to stay connected, be inspired, and keep moving toward your goals by stripping away your limitations. And we will see you back next week. Thanks for listening.